Okay, I'm good. Excellent. Okay, well, good evening. Uh, welcome to the 2023 informational meeting for FCA Lacrosse. My name is Court Miller. I'm one of the founders and one of the coaches for FCA Lacrosse, and we're going to go ahead and get started this evening. So, welcome again, and here we go about FCA Lacrosse. Uh, I think the keys in this is we've been doing this for a while. This will be our eighth year of uh, running FCA lacrosse. Uh, it was originally conceived uh, and launched to help players develop uh, so that they would uh, um, be able to learn the fundamentals of the game and competition and uh, have a great time. Uh, so I started it with Watson Fung and Jeff Weisenborn, and then coach Beth, uh, joined us soon thereafter. And we fought, we joined with FCA because we found their models and core values to be very much in line with what we wanted our kids who were in the program, uh, to be, um, involved with. So we are not a park district program. We are not uh, strictly a feeder program. Uh, we are sort of a boutique lacrosse program. Um, so at the bottom, it talks about financially, our goal is to keep costs at a minimum while still providing a high quality experience. So a couple little success slides we had uh, in 2021, we had 13 players on a team that finished fourth fourth in state and then uh last year we had 14 alum on the wheaton academy that team that finished that doesn't count all of our players that played um on high school teams around the area whether it be geneva or wheaton north or wheaton south that had really successful seasons we've been doing this long enough that now we have kids that are going off and playing in college uh, that started uh, with FCA lacrosse. Why play lacrosse? I think uh, that there's several reasons that we've sort of picked out that, that, uh, that we'd like to emphasize. One is that it's a fast paced game, contrary to some other spring sports. And as a player, there's very little standing around. Lacrosse is a great mixture of a number of sports, including soccer, basketball, and hockey. It includes physical aspects like the physicality of hockey without the skating part, which is good for some of us. Uh, it's typically not as violent as football or as conducive to concussions as soccer. It develops, and this is one of the reasons that I love it so much for an athlete, because it uh, develops an array of an ath athletic skills, hand-eye, footwork, endurance, speed, teamwork, and sports IQ. It allows a player to be creative and inventive with their stick skills. And for the parents out there, it's a great spectator sport because there is constantly action on the field. I think the other thing is uh, that over the last 10 or 15 years, a large number of colleges at all level have added lacrosse to their offerings, which is allowing more and more players to continue. And I alluded to earlier that a number mentioned earlier that a number of our players have gone on and are playing in college. I think that um, that there is a place for a kid that wants to play lacrosse in college. And so um, getting into it now will certainly be helpful, whether you're in first grade or you're in eighth grade, you still have plenty of time if lacrosse is something that uh, that you're thinking about for college. What if I've never played before? Uh, most kids haven't picked up a lacrosse stick until they do. So you've got to start sometime and now is a perfect time to get started. Things that help, get a stick and ball as soon as possible, start catching and throwing the ball, work on running and changing directions with the ball and the stick, and then find a, find a game on YouTube and watch it. So you, or now ESPN, if you have ESPN Plus, carries a ton of college games. You can go on uh, YouTube and you can search up youth games and get an idea, like you, if you're a 10-year-old, you can go online and look up 10-year-old lacrosse and you'll be able to find 
finding an idea of what 10 year olds, what their game looks like. Uh, so that's a great place to, to get started. I think there's some distinctive about our programs that were important to us when we started it and, and make it sort of a unique uh, program. One, uh, we seek to develop our athletes' character, faith, and lacrosse skill. Um, we prioritize quality coaches. Uh, coaching, our coaches are experienced, trained, and paid. Most of our coaches have played college, some level of college lacrosse, and have coached uh, not only at the youth level, but at the high school level. Um, Jeff coached college for 18 years. Uh, so there's quite a bit of experience with our coaches. Um, our mindset is that we're helping them learn long-term and, and that's how we set up our practices and our uh, game objectives. We focus on uh, club and team organization communication, which I think is one of our strong suits. We can create a, a positive experience for both athletes and families, and that isn't always the case in youth sports. And we get to use uh, Wheaton Academy. So we are at a uh, top-notch facility, and we use the same equipment for training that the high school guys use. So. Good stuff. Uh, just the next slides are a couple pictures of things that we've done. We teach the game uh, while we're coaching it and make that fun. But we also do clinics outside of um, the season. Uh, we serve and fellowship together. So whether it's uh, Feed My Starving Children or some other activity, our team dinners or um, uh, the FCA night at Wheaton Academy where all the youth players come out and uh, get to watch a game together as a, a group. We compete. So it's not, um, it's not like playground. It's, it's uh, helping the players understand competitive sports. And we celebrate lots to celebrate, whether it's, uh, winning a weekend tournament or a season long championship or celebrating our players that get invited to the all-star game or celebrating our graduates when they're uh, in the last practice of their eighth grade year. Uh, we think it's important for, for us to celebrate the, the good things, the blessings that come our way. Uh, this is a coaching staff. Uh, so you see the founding coaches and then the number of the years that the coaches have been with us. And then all the teams have uh, one of the things that's super cool and the players love is that we get Wheaton Academy uh, players to come help out with each team. So each team will have one, two, three Wheaton Academy uh, lacrosse players there at every practice and at games. Um, helping out and the kids love being around and making connections with the high school players. And these are high school players that you would feel comfortable with your third grader being around. Uh, coaching philosophy, develop the heart, soul, and mind and strength of the players. Um, we are of course a growth uh, mindset. And, and I spoke of that earlier. We wanna, we wanna help an athlete grow as an individual and develop completely to strive for excellence. And we think winning is a result of development. That's not our winning, hopefully will come as we grow as uh, players. And we believe that God's greatest commandment is to love them with our heart, mind and strength. And, and this can be introduced and cultivated through sports. Um, and the result will be a fully developed athlete capable of competing in any arena or conditions for God's glory. Uh, the costs, there are four main areas of costs involved. Two of them go away after the first year. Team fees do not go away. Those are what we, uh, and these are just our base, base costs. So we try to structure our, our fees just to cover really our, our core costs. Um, and then the uniform, the uniform, 
um, is the same design. So if your player still fits in it, they can wear it the next year. Kind of the same deal with equipment. Um, and we'll talk a little bit later about that. And then the league has added uh, a $30 membership per player. It's required by the league and provides player insurance. And uh, if we play in any tournaments, oftentimes the tournaments will require it. Ultimately, we don't want cost to be the factor that keeps you from playing. And if, if you would like us to help you navigate this area, you just let us know. Equipment. So here's the equipment you need. Helmet gloves, arm pads, shoulder pads, shoes, either tennis shoes or cleats, uh, protective cup, a mouth guard, and the uniform. Uh, there's a new rule on shoulder pads, which came out last year. So there shouldn't, like, you need shoulder pads. And if you go out to buy them, they'll fit this. You don't have to worry about that. Um, optional for field player rib pads. Not too many kids wear them. Uh, sticks, defensive or offensive. We'll talk to you about that. But um, stick stringing is super important. So it makes a huge difference. And I would say if you go buy a stick off the rack, meaning you just go to Dick's and you find a stick and you buy it, there's a chance that when your son brings it to practice, the coach may say, hey, we're going to keep this and restring it for you. Um, brand new strip sticks aren't often strung with the best pocket available and having a good pocket can really change how much you're your son enjoys the game. So if you have a question about that, please fire out on that one. Equipment swap. Uh, we always ask if you have outgrown equipment that's still in good shape that we can pass down to younger players. We do a lot of that. Um, so as you see, new equipment can get expensive. So uh, we always try to help uh, coordinate passing equipment around. You can find the used equipment uh, at secondhand stores or garage sales, uh, but not shoulder pads. Don't get those. Uh, Dick's Sporting Goods is a, a good place to get a starter set. And we have we will have a 20% off coupon for Dick's. If you need it, let us know. Um, but you can also buy stuff a la carte. So let's say you've got a helmet. Um, you wouldn't need to buy a starter set. You would just go get the other items that you might need. There it is, pictures of all of it. Uh, places that we typically frequent, Dick's. Uh, there's a lacrosse only store in Naperville called uh, Tama Lacrosse and they do a great job. They're on the north side of Naperville um, and you can find them online. And then online, uh, you can find Tama's location online and then uh, online stores would be lax.com or lacrossemonkey.com. Those are two sources that we've also recommended that people check out. Um, communication, we use TeamSnap. So practices posted on TeamSnap. So all of the season's practices will be uploaded on the TeamSnap. And then your coach reminds you with a, a weekly email. So we'll have a this week in FCA lacrosse that will go out uh, and just a reminder what's coming up and the next week uh, games are posted there weather if severe weather is in the area the coach will call the parents to come pick up we'll move the kids inside the building and um, otherwise we'll let you know at least an hour before practice cancellations and rescheduling the coach will email you about how those will be handed and then any other special events will be posted on on team snap or our facebook group or mailed out uh questions once you get put on a team you would go first to your coach uh there okay moving on teams and ages uh for those of you that are new to it, it they break it down by two grades so if you're k through second you're in the minis uh, we run a special minis program that's not part of the Illinois Boys Lacrosse Association. Juniors play seven on seven, so that's third and fourth graders play across the field instead of on a full field, and they play seven on seven versus regular lacrosse, which is 10 on 10. 
so you see once they get to fifth sixth seventh and eighth grade they play on a standard size field and they play regulation lacrosse which is 10 on 10. our typical team size you can see that um I think we wouldn't want to go at the lower than our lower number on those teams. And, and um, usually the higher number is a great, great number to play uh, the season with. Uh, Coach Beth is on with us and she is going to uh, talk about the minis program. Coach. Okay. Beth. Thank you, uh, Coach Miller. Uh, I'm Beth Weisenborn, and I help to run the FCA Lacrosse Chicago program along with Coach Miller and um, Coach Jeff Weisenborn. Um, in particular, when I'm not at my desk doing uh, administrative things, I get to be out on the field with our kindergarten, first and second grade boys. Um, we've learned from experience to start our minis program a little bit later than um, we start the older boys. So we, we begin with the minis April 17th. That allows the weather to warm up a little bit. Um, so the kids don't have to come out in, you know, snow pants and a, a, a coat um, wrapped around their equipment. And we run to um, May 26th, so right around Memorial Day weekend. Um, I do not put them in a league any longer. We do all of our um, work in-house. So our practices are held at the same, on the same days um, as our older boys, which are this year mostly Mondays at, um, and Thursday or Friday. So most weeks it's Thursday, some weeks it's a Friday, but we, we practice around the high school schedule. Um, and for the minis, I, I hold a one hour practice. So we'll get started a little bit after the older boys and we end a little bit before the older boys. Um, and I just ask that players attend when, when they're able. And if we keep it keep it nice and simple, the practices we we'll, we will introduce, uh, teach and and practice fundamental skills, and then we do allow them to and encourage them to um, further practice these skills in small sided games that we run with them. So usually it's myself, Coach Valley, uh, my daughter Emery. Um, sometimes my son Aiden will come over, but I think this year we're going to have Lodi Lanham help us with the with the younger boys. So we have many coaches to help out with these with the little boys, and I usually don't um, have more than ten to ten to twelve. Um, that's a that keeps the size reasonable for us. And the cost is $100, um, which includes a penny for them to practice in. And the registration is open. You can go to the FCA website to um, find that registration link. Um, I have the coaches and the helpers listed there. And if you have any questions at all, there's the email address. You can email me about the minis program or anything about FCA lacrosse. Um, both Coach Miller and I manage the, the email address um, account for the program. So, okay, Coach Miller. Okay, so I would say I've been around a lot of youth programs for a long time. I, I can't think of a better entry program into a sport than the way that Coach Beth runs our minis. It's, it's fun, the players are engaged. The, the coach to player ratio is like two to one, yeah. three to one. Um, so the kids are really engaged and um, running around and having a ton of fun. So uh, if you're considering just an entry into sports programs in general, this is a great way to get into, uh, into your son playing a sport. Yeah, um, Coach Miller, I should add, I, I forgot to mention, we do um, put the the minis in full equipment. Um, and oftentimes you can, oftentimes I have donated equipment to, to share with the kids. Um, a lot of the smaller sizes can be picked up at yard sales 
or uh, played against sports. Um, but we do put them in full equipment because, you know, they're slinging sticks and um, <laughs> just protects their noggins and their their bodies from from the contact that we do allow them to to have when they're playing. Okay, we got just a couple more slides here mm -hmm. as we're, we're pulling in. What does the commitment look like? Coach Beth just talked about with the uh, the minis uh, for the juniors and the minors and the majors. We typically practice an hour and a half twice a week. Uh, we'll start three practices total in March, and then we get into twice a week, April, and that runs through the first week of June. We participate in the IBLA, which is the largest league in the country. The season is eight games, four at home and four away. Um, there is a one-day playoffs in June. Game time takes about 60 minutes for juniors, 75 minutes for minors and majors. Typically, away games are within a 40-minute drive. That really depends, depends on our conference placement, and we really won't know that until mid-March. Uh, home games are mostly on Saturdays at Wheaton Academy. Away games are dependent on opponent schedule. We work hard to not schedule any games before noon on Sundays, but we don't always have control of when our opponents have, um, have field accessibility. Divisional placement, the level that we play, we try to make the best decision we can about our team's competition level and try and place them where we will be challenged but have an opportunity for success. Uh, it is our hope to find a one-day tournament to enter all three teams. The issue we run into is sometimes they're on Sundays, which we won't do, and um, other times they're just not um, convenient for us. So. We're working on that. Stay tuned for more information on that. Uh, important date. So our uh, evaluations are coming up. They are going to be on uh, February 25th at Midwest Sports Training, which is really close to Wheaton Academy. It's a nice inside facility. So uh, register on our Warrior Youth Athletics website if you have questions about that. If you uh, are interested but won't be there on that day, we still need you to register. It's $15. And, um, and that lets us know that you, that you are interested in being placed on a team. First practice, Saturday, March 11th at Wheaton Academy on the turf outside. Uh, game schedule gets set late in March. So our games will be in April and May. And then the playoffs we talked about earlier. Uh, this is a story you can read about uh, a kid that played uh, FCA for a number of years in one position and uh, stepped up to be the goalie for our, uh, our team and ended up being a fantastic goalie and led our team to a championship. So Kaysen is now a freshman goalie at Wheaton Academy yep. and uh, doing great. I think uh, two years ago, last year, two years ago, two years ago, uh, we had a team that uh, got into the playoff and faced three other teams that were undefeated, and we ended up winning the championship. I think the thing that got me about this was uh, the camaraderie and the, the focus of the boys that – it started at 7 a.m., about an hour away for the playoffs, and it didn't finish till 6 p.m. We had to sit through a rainstorm, and it was it was a really hot, muggy June day. Uh, but they were willing to put all of that stuff behind them and just play lacrosse. And, and I thought it was a great testimony to how their heart, minds, and souls were all integrated Um into being a competitive player and the growth that they had made over the years to get there. So uh, now is the time that we open up for questions. I don't think we would have anybody with the Colby. Well, um, a couple, we have a couple. Uh, okay. Mr. Campbell's here and Mr. Carrick. Great. Another. So yeah, if you guys anybody, have any Anybody got a question? You can unmute and just shout it out. 
Otherwise, um, I've recorded the session and I will post it and, and email it out and I'll put a link to uh, it on our website. So if you want to share it with other people or your, you know, your spouse or your kid, you, you're more than welcome to do that. Okay, well, thank, thank you, you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, we're super excited about the upcoming year and FCA lacrosse, and we can't wait to get outside and get yes. it going. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Court. Yeah. Good one. Thanks.